hey, I'm going to show you how to debug C code using GDB. So I've got this test program right here. Let's compile it with GCC and minus G to get debug symbols. This produces the binary a.out. And we can debug it by typing gdb a.out. And inside gdb, run the program by typing run. And now we see that it prints the same thing as uh, it did uh, running outside gdb. And uh, now we can debug the program by setting a breakpoint in the main function, typing break main, and then run it again. Instead of typing run, we can type just r. Now gdb runs until the first breakpoint, which is in the first statement of the main function. In this case, it's the printf call, which prints something to standard output. So we can step over this call by typing next, and we see the output printed here in the terminal. Now we are about to enter this loop function, but if I type next, then gdb goes to the next statement in the current function. What we want to do here is we want to step into the loop function, so we can use the step command, which goes to uh, the next line uh, in any function. So in this case, uh, it jumps into the loop function here, and we are about to assign the variable x. So let's step over that. I can type n instead of next. Now let's inspect the value of x by typing print x. And we see it has the value 8, as we did assign it already. Let's print the value of sum. And now this has a seemingly random value. This is actually the value that is on the stack at the stack position that sum will occupy. Uh, but we haven't assigned it yet, so let's step over the assignment, and now we can see sum has the value 0. So that's good. And uh, now we are inside this loop, so let's step forward a bit. Instead of typing n every time, I can press enter, which will run the previous command I entered. I press enter to continue stepping. One thing that can be disorienting in GDB here is that uh, it only prints one line at a time. And to see where you are in the code, it can be useful to type list. This prints four lines above and below the current statement. And uh, to get an even better view, there's something called the text UI, which we can enter by typing TUI enable. And this brings up the, this view here, where we can scroll up and down in the code using arrow keys. We can see the current statement we are on. Uh, it's highlighted there with the white background. And when I step in the code, then the current line is updated in the text view. So this is very useful. It doesn't work super well though if you have a lot of output in your program. So if you print the standard output or standard error, then it can conflict with the text UI in GDB. So if I now continue the program until it stops by typing continue, then uh, it prints some more stuff here, but uh, now it's overwriting the command prompt in GDB and uh, conflicting with the GDB display. So we can fix that by pressing Ctrl L, and this re-layouts uh, the terminal window. Uh, so when you're using the text UI and you're printing stuff, you might be you might need to press Ctrl L to re-layout uh, from time to time. You can leave the text UI by typing TUI disable or just D. To open the text UI, I prefer to type minus, which is an abbreviation for TUI enable. Okay, so not, let's modify this uh, program that we have here. So the loop takes longer time. And the recompile it. And now when I run the program, we can see that GDB detected that the binary has changed, so it reloaded the symbols, and uh, I'll press continue to run the program. Now the program is uh, running and uh, it's uh, taking a lot longer time to finish, so I can interrupt it by pressing Control c Now we can uh, check where we are again using the text UI, and uh, that step so it highlights the line. So we are inside this loop, and one thing that can be very useful in GDB is to type BT, which shows you the backtrace. So frame number zero is the current stack frame, that's the current function we are in. And then below that we have the function that called the current function. Then below that we have the function that called that function. So in this case main called loop, and then loop called calc. We can go up one stack frame by typing up, 
and we can go up again now and that's the top frame which is main and then we can go down again and down by typing down and we can also jump to a specific stack, stack frame by index by typing frame and then the number or we can just try type f and the number so this is a useful uh, tool for navigating and uh, you want to jump between the stack frames to inspect, inspect variables in different uh, functions. All right, so uh, now that's the basic use for when you are running a program in GDB, but you can also debug a program that started running outside of GDB. So let's uh, do that. So we start the program a dot out here and I want to figure out the process ID for the program. So I can stop the program by, by hitting control Z and then type PS and here we see the process ID. And then in a separate terminal, I'm going to debug this process. So I type GDB a dot out and uh, the process ID 1068 uh, and now I get an error here. It says uh, it's a security thing, so I don't have permission to debug this process. And we can fix this by typing echo zero pipe to sudo t proxys kernel yama ptrace scope. So now we should be able to debug the process. Now we have actually attached to the running program here, but uh, I stopped it in this window here and we can see also that it's uh, got, it's received the SIG STP uh, signal. The program can be resumed by typing percent here in the original terminal. And then uh, I can continue here. So now the uh, program is running again, we can pause it and uh, we can check where we are in the code and step around. We can check the backtrace and go up a level. Now inside the loop here, uh, we, the loop is not terminating because X is increasing on line 24. We add one to X every iteration. Let's check the value of X and what is sum. Sum is this large number. Uh, we can modify variables in the running program by typing set. So for example, set x equals minus 10. And now since x is negative, we should get out of the loop. So let's try that. We step ahead and we can type now uh, finish to uh, get out of the current function. Uh, so that finishes the uh, calc function and then we are out in the loop function again. And then we can step, 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 and uh, let's check x again, x is minus 10, step. And now we should get out of the loop, which we do. And uh, notice now that the, the printouts are appearing on the left side in my original terminal. They are not interfering with the GDB output, so they don't affect the text UI. So that's a nice thing about attaching to a process. All right, so now the program finished and we are done debugging it. And finally, uh, another way of debugging programs with GDB is that if you have a memory error, so let's uh, change sum to a pointer here and uh, compile it again. And now that when we run this program, we get a segmentation fault. And uh, we, see, we see also that a core has been dumped. Now, I'm not going to go into detail what this is, uh, but core dumps can be used to debug uh, the program at the point where it crashed. I'm running Ubuntu here, and we can use the core dump by typing core, core dump ctl debug. And this opens GDB for us at the point where the program crashed. And we can now inspect the program, see where we are, look at the backtrace, uh, look at uh, the values of variables in the program. Very often it's enough to debug a bug in the, in the program by just knowing where in the program it crashed. But uh, if just knowing where the program crashed isn't enough, then it's often 
uh, very helpful to see the state of the program by looking at the values in different variables at runtime. And that's exactly what we, we can do here with GDB. Uh, so we can print uh, sum, what was the total sum? And here we see that sum is an int64 pointer. It's actually a null pointer, so no wonder it crashed here on the assignment. Uh, a final tip I have for you for GDB, and uh, that's uh, a configuration option that we can set this in our .config uh, slash GDB directory, GDB early int init. Uh, here we can set an option that's called startup quietly on. And this is very nice because it reduces some unnecessary info when you start GDB. So to give an example, I will start GDB here without that option active. And now GDB prints all of this stuff here, which uh, we're not really interested in. So uh, setting this option just uh, gets rid of some unnecessary clutter. And uh, I always have this option active. So I hope this uh, was useful for you. I think GDB is a super useful tool for debugging C code and uh, an essential tool to have.